we're going to be doing the rooster fish. We're starting off with making a circle. So I'm making my parameters, moving my hand, and there's our circle. And then it's going to come out for the face, the mouth, and the front. Now I'm going to go all the way back here where I'm going to just follow my the top all the way down for the top of the fish. And with that circle, I'm going to follow that right up here to the bottom of the fish, the belly up to the mouth. And I'll just put in an open mouth. And then back here, we're going to do a triangle. So I have my back line, my triangle. That's going to form the basis for that very rigid um, caudal fin or tail fin. It is a pelagic fish and it's a fast swimmer, so it's got one of those rigid tails. So I'm just gauging the front here, um, the lips and coming up here on the mouth and down on the back. Now I'm going to make a little line here. This is for the first dorsal. This is why they're called a rooster fish. I'm just going to make kind of a triangle that's going to give me my base for it. Now the second dorsal, making a long line, comes right in there at the peduncle. And right off of the mouth, I'm going to make another circle. That's going to be the eye. Let's get this gauged right here, a little bit forward. And we got to bring up the gill cover just like that. It's like a backward C. There's a couple of indentations there for the gill. And I'm making that a little bit smoother coming out. So behind the gill, we're going to find a place and that's going to be the pectoral fin. Below that, we're going to put the ventral fin. Remember, all fish have two, but we only see one. Come back a little bit, straight line, and over, and there we have the anal fin. So we're looking at making sure our uh, positioning is correct. Now for this, this rooster fish, we're going to go up on the top, and there are seven of these long rooster-like spines. So we're making these seven lines just to guide us. We'll come back and make the base afterwards. We want to make sure there's seven. And it is for this flailing hard dorsal fin that he is known. And then we're going to just come down a little bit like that on the first one and come down a little bit on the second one. And let me see, where's the third? There's the third one. And then we have the fourth one. And we just keep going until we have all seven. And the last ones are a little more of a triangle than just the half triangle. And it comes down. So we have the base and we have those lines for the rooster part. I'm erasing my guidelines now. We don't want that to show through when we put our paint on. And getting rid of that line in the back. And I usually work light so that the erasing is pretty easy to do. So now we have our basic shape of our fish. I'm using the Reeves palette that I always use my watercolors. And we're also going to use another palette that's got some purple and some turquoise in. These are your inexpensive palettes that you can buy in almost any art store, arts and crafts. So first I'm getting my big half inch brush and I'm putting just plain water on the fish so that when I do apply my color, it'll have a nice bleed to it. This is for a wash. So I'm just kind of moving some water around. Now I'm going to mix some red and some blue and I'm going to get a purple. That particular palette doesn't have purple in it. And I'm going to put some purple over where I had the water. It does get darker. The rooster fish have these um, stripes that are kind of obvious. Different colors show at different times. Kind of a purple and a blue. So using my big brush, I'm moving this purple around in the front of the head over the top and um, getting a little more, making it a little darker. You can see how that water that was on the fish um, is allowing the paint to kind of blend. Now there's another line at the bottom, I just made that. And I'm just moving that paint around on the top, just moving it, and there's another line that I'm gonna make, there we go. And that goes down to the tail. So you see these lines in the fish um, when he comes out of the water. So again, our big brush, just kind of pushing it around where we had our water, so we get a blend. The colors aren't gonna be absolutely distinctive to each other, they're all going to kind of blend, but you will be able to see the stripes. 
I'm moving it a little bit around there on the mouth, just putting a little color there, a little bit down here on the ventral and on the anal fin, showing a little bit of the uh, spines that are on there, a little bit on the second dorsal. And I'm taking a little bit of that dark blue, make it a little more purple, and we're going to put it here on the fin. The fin has a nice dark color to it too. Still using my big brush. There's a lot of area to cover, so I am using this half inch brush. And I'm getting now um, a little bit of that beautiful turquoise for over the top. And I'm just moving that around, bringing it down into the purple. And that's going to be that which is on top. And then there's a little bit of that turquoise up here on the hard dorsal, on that rooster uh, flange of the fish. So I'm just kind of putting a little bit up here using the side of my brush for each one of these seven dorsal spines. And I'm going to put a little bit up here around on the cheeks, the nose, just kind of pushing the color around. You can be kind of free with it. Don't be scared of it. A little bit here too, but it's a little bit lighter. It is um, where we have counter shading, of course, darker on the top, lighter on the back, on the bottom. That's for the fish so they can uh, come up on their prey easier and they can be hidden a little easier. Just moving the color a little bit around. I like when I have the paint on my brush, I like to use it in the different areas instead of just working on one area at a time. So now I'm using a little bit of yellow up here. That's just the yellow off of the Reeves palette. Just moving it right through there. If it blends with the blue and gets green, that's fine. A little bit of yellow there on the gill. And I'm going to just stroke my brush to make the spines on the second dorsal. I'm also going to put a little yellow there on the tail and a little bit down below. And we're also going to put a little bit on the ventral fin, a little bit around the eyes. And now we're going to get another color here. And that's a little bit of that blue around on the face. That turquoise, it, you know, we use that turquoise. The more we put the water in it, the lighter it is. Um, less water, the darker. Now I'm adding a little dark blue to get it darker up at the top. Because it is darker right there underneath the spines. And the rooster fish can get up to five feet, which is pretty remarkable, and over 110 pounds. But most of the fish that are hooked are about in the 20 pound range. But it can be a big fish. So now I'm gonna to go to my number four round. If you like a number two or a number six, that works as well. I find I'm comfortable with a number four. Now this is where I come in with my black. This is for the eyeball. Very carefully making the circle of the eyeball and filling it in, but for a little bit of white. You like that little bit of white and that gives the life to the eye. And I'm the fish eyes always sit in a socket. So very carefully we're making the socket. That way the eye can move around easier. Also, let's put a little definition here on the lips. All fish, of course, have lips. I'm using a little bit of that black, but a little more washed out. I don't like to use straight black except on the eyeball. So we're going to show the lips coming out. A little. Be careful you don't outline the fish. You don't want the lines to be um, all the time connected. You want to like break the line up a little bit. There's a little bit of darkness there behind his eye. And there's some other dark areas around the face. I'm gonna bring some dark blue in here and just kind of push it around over that purple. A little more water, because we want it to move and to blend. Pushing it up and a little bit forward back and down a little bit here on the nose. I'm not showing the nostrils, but all fish do have nostrils. And just a little bit around on the lips and underneath. Just giving it a little more dimension on the face. Now I'm going to use um, my dark blue and I'm going to come up here and show those hard spines that give the fish its name. Be careful as you come up. I know some of you beginners have a little hard time making a, a line that continues and flows easy, but you get better with practice. And the next one, just 
keeping my brush flowing, moving my whole arm. Don't try to do it with just your hand. Move your entire arm when you're doing this. And then I'm going to start and come up with the next one. Start in there and bring it all the way out. And the next one starting here all the way out. And another one. I've got four done, three to go. There's another one. One, two, three, four. We have five of them down. And now I've got the next one. And there it goes over. And the last one, number seven. Whenever you do any of these fish, be aware that you're doing the exact number of whether it's fins or spines. And that way you have a more realistic picture of the fish. And I'm coming down here a little bit of that washed out blue just to give it a little more um, definition. I'm coming down here on the ventral, one of the ventral fins and the anal fin, a little bit of darkness on the spines. And right up here around the eye, again, a little more definition. I'm using the dark blue for most of this definition. Very dark blue here just to show in, show the operculum, that covering on the gill, gill cover, a little bit on the lips, and then the back one, which is a little bit thicker, bringing it down. Remember that, um, that covering of the gill actually goes all the way up under the mouth. Now I'm putting in the pectoral fin and a little bit of definition on the underside of the fish. Blending, since I have that color on my brush, I'm just blending it a little bit up here on that dorsal fin and making the top of the fish a little bit darker. He's got like this very high hump right behind his eye where that dorsal fin is attached. Just a little bit darker color here on the pectoral fin and the underside on, under the belly. Now that's all white, so be careful you don't put any paint on there. You want to keep it white. So it's looking pretty good, but we still have a bit to go. We're going to fill in the base of those spines, and that's with a bit of a washed out purple. I'm changing the value of these colors by how much water I use. Less water, darker the value, darker the color. A lot more water and we get a lighter tone. And just a little bit of accent up here. And bringing that down a little bit. I want to blend it. So I just put water on my brush and I'm blending it down. When you want to blend your colors, it's nice if you just put water on your brush, no color, and come in between the other colors. Now on this second dorsal, it's usually the soft dorsal, I'm making some straight lines that show all the spines. Those are all the bones coming off the vertebrae. And this is the second dorsal or soft dorsal. I don't know how soft it is on this. He's got a lot of spines in it. And then I'm just going to make just a little ragged edge at the top where there's the top of those spines. Little like little triangles almost at the top. And I just want to make a little more definition on that tail coming up and bringing it down a little bit wavy. Usually the, the backs of their tails are a little bit uneven, but it is a rigid pelagic fish tail. Put some spines in it, some straight lines in dark color. Again, the dark blue. And I'm also going to use that to define the anal fin a little more, outlining it. And put in a little bit of those spines so you can see them a little better. Just straight lines. And the same thing on one of these ventral fins. Again, they have two ventral fins, but we are only showing one of them. Spines straight down, and it gets closer up at the top, and a little bit of an uneven brush to connect it all and some spines on the pectoral fin. Fish is starting to look pretty good now. Now we're going to take the big brush. All right, I'm wiping all the moisture out of the brush. I want it dry. All right, you don't want any 
water in that brush at all. So now we're going to take the brush and I put it into the purple. And with the bristles kind of flailed, you can see it's rough, I'm using the dark blue and the purple and I'm tapping it. This gives a texture like the scales. It also, the more you tap it in one area, you can make it darker. So I'm getting that dark blue and purple and now some of the turquoise and I'm just tapping it. You get straight up and down tap. Make sure you have no water in the brush or you won't be able to get this effect. But this gives that look of scales in a very quick way so you're not going over and meticulously doing every scale. Notice how as I'm tapping over the same area it makes it darker. A little bit here on the gills, just a tad around the ventral fin, over here on the blue, just tapping it. I think that looks pretty good. So what do I need to do now? I'm using my little brush and I'm doing a, just a little bit of definition around the lips, put in the inside of the mouth, a little bit dark there, just with a little bit of that dark blue, filling it in a little bit because the mouth is open, a little bit more definition underneath. Looking at my eye, just checking out if there's any more little details that I need to put in. And you can cross-reference this to photographs when you're doing your rooster fish and see what other details that you want to add to it. Just a little bit of blending. And he's looking pretty good. But I'm going to put just a little bit of darkness here at the base of the second door. So I'm using a little brown, just a little bit. So just very slightly the base of the second dorsal with some brown. Give it a little two dimension there. And we've got our rooster fish. Unusual fish only found mainly in Spanish speaking countries, not here in the US, but when people go out, they love to catch them. I hope you enjoyed it and good luck with your art.